All right, we're getting kind of close to the end of the course. This is week seven, lecture one, profile analysis, also known as mixed model ANOVA. So when do you use uh, profile analysis? Well, when you have two nominal independent variables, one of them is a between subjects variable with two or more levels. Uh, so usually it's two or more groups that you want to compare to each other. And the second IV is a within subjects independent variable with two or more levels. So note you got a between subjects one and a within subjects one. So usually the within subjects independent variable is the same outcome measured multiple times, so the same like anxiety tests, for example, uh, or multiple outcomes that are measured at one time, but they have the same sort of range of possible values. So like Neo PI scores, for example. So you would have one or more DVs that are measured on an interval scale. So two nominal IVs, one between subjects, one within subjects, and one DV that is appropriate for, uh, so it's um, uh, interval or ratio. So it's appropriate for parametric analysis. So for example, does the personality that younger people anticipate having at old age, measured by the Neo PI, differ from what older people actually report? Good question. So in this particular study, you've got age cohort, and that's a between subjects independent variable. It's got two levels, younger. So it's younger people responding what they think they're gonna be like at an older age. So take this Neo PI, how you think you would respond uh, at an old age. The other level of the between subjects independent variable is actual older people who are responding at that older age. So we're gonna compare how younger people thought they would be personality-wise, to what old people actually report being. Neo-PI subscale is your within subjects independent variable. So between was age cohort two levels, Neo-PI is five levels. What are those five levels? Neuroticism, extroversion, openness to new experience, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. Your DV here is subscale score. So on the Neo PI, they all have the same range of possible values. So it's a little bit sort of funky because you think that, well, Neo PI, you know, Neo PI, Neo PI score is my uh, dependent variable, but it's actually, um, I mean, it's true and not true because <laughs> it varies as a function of this within subjects independent variable here. Uh, that is which subscale it is. So the, the dependent variable is actually the subscale score. Uh, independent variable between that's between subjects is whether you're old or young pretending you're old and then your within subjects uh, independent variable is ne which neo pi subscale it is so what the hell are profiles well if you went to school in california we had to make these in like fourth grade that's a silhouette profile of george washington and the idea here is that you're looking at sort of the pattern of the lines for a particular group and it's sort of like a profile you know the chin and the nose and the forehead or whatever and you're comparing the profile of one group to the profile of the other group in this case uh, it's the younger and older folks across the neo pi five subscales there so are the neo pi subscale patterns different for younger uh, persons pretending they're old and actual older persons? Good question. So the assumptions for mixed model ANOVA combine assumptions that are required for between groups and within groups designs into one. So there's a lot of them. Multivariate normality. That is the DV is normally distributed for each IV and each combination of independent variables. So it's across the board for every cell normally distributed. Linearity, so there are linear linear relationships among the levels of the within subjects IV. So, you know, like um, neuroticism has a linear relationship with extroversion, openness, agreeableness, conscientiousness, etc. And then it, uh, each one of those also has a linear relationship with each of the other subscales. So do you remember sphericity or circularity? Um, maybe or maybe not. It has two parts. One is homogeneity variances, the usual homogeneity variance assumption. The variance for each cell in the design is, are approximately the same. 
Second part is the homogeneity of covariance. That is the correlations of the DV scores between any two cells of the design, that is any two IV combination of IV levels uh, are about the same correlation. So that's the one that's like almost always violated if you remember back to uh, when we did repeated measures ANOVA. So we use a test called the Mockley's test of sphericity to test the two parts of the sphericity assumption. And the null of Mockley's is that the sphericity assumption is met. So you actually don't want to be rejecting the null here. But I got to tell you, most of the time, Mockley SIG uh, is not greater than 0.05, <laughs> showing that the assumption is met. Um, if it is, you'd use the sphericity assumed results. Um, typically, this is what you find. Mockley SIG is less than 0.05. You violated the assumption. So you don't have a homogeneous variances, or maybe you don't have homogeneous covariances. Um, so what do you do? Um, you interpret the epsilon-adjusted ANOVA results, such as greenhouse geyser, which is what we used in the past, the greenhouse geyser results. So it's not like you're doomed. You just read the greenhouse geyser line of results instead of the sphericity assumed results. So here is a profile analysis of leisure time ratings for three different groups, belly dancers, politicians, and administrators, what they like to do. So um, just giving you an example, and this is from a famous textbook by Tabachnik and Fidel. So the sample size requirements to do mixed model ANOVA are at least five participants for each IV that it, within subjects level for each IV between subjects level. So each combination of those things, you need at least five participants. So for example, let's say you got NeoPI, that's a five level independent variable <clears throat> between subjects, sorry, and age group, a two-level independent between subjects variable, you would need five participants um, times five within subjects levels times two <coughs> excuse me between subjects levels equals 50 minimum participants in your study. That's what you need. So you basically just multiply, in this case it's five by two by five or five by five by two. Uh, so you end up with 25 times 2 or 50. Ideally, the sample would also be equally distributed between uh, the two uh, between subjects IV levels. That is, so if you got two groups, you know, young people pretending they're old and actual old people, and you had to have uh, 50 participants, you'd have 25 young people, 25 old people. Ideally. So there are three different comparisons that you can do in profile analysis. So um, they give them different names. Uh, they're actually just the two main effects in the interaction, but <laughs> they give them different names in profile analysis to make this analysis pretty fancy. So there's what they call the test of levels. That is the main effect of the between subjects independent variable. It's usually not very meaningful. So uh, and I'll hopefully give you an example. I get I give you an example coming up. Um, it's usually not meaningful to test for uh, between subjects independent variable differences combined across all levels of the within subjects independent variable. So in the example that I gave earlier, what you'd be comparing is the, uh, you compare the younger folks pretending they're old and the actual older people on their single score combined across all NeoPI subscales, right? So it's like their average overall NeoPI subscale score. Um, and why is that not meaningful? Well, what the heck does it mean? It's neuroticism, extroversion, openness, agreeableness, conscientiousness, average of all those things in one compared to the average uh, of those same things for the other group. Well, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> it doesn't really have a meaning. So generally, um, you know, it's not, this is not considered a very meaningful effect. So here is age cohort for the that example study we talked about. Um, we have uh, these means of 28.796 for younger and 27.196 are, for the younger, the average of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 dots. And the mean for older is the average of their 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 dots. And again, it's the average overall NeoPI score versus, for one group versus the overall NeoPI score for the other groups. So notice it's just two, num two means being compared. Um, what does a combined NeoPI score mean? Does it have meaning? Um, typically, no. Um, <clears throat> it's typically meaningless uh, to do this 
a comparison. So the between subjects IB main effect is usually just sort of ignored in your analysis. So the second type of test you can do in profile analysis is a test of flatness. And that is a main effect of the within subjects independent variable. And again, it's usually not very meaningful. <laughs> so um, it's the interaction in case you haven't seen what's coming here that we care about. So usually it's not very meaningful to test for uh, differences between the within subjects IV combined across the levels of the between subjects IV. So what does that mean? So an example uh, that I gave earlier, you'd be, uh, this would be the comparisons among the Neo PI subscale scores combined across both younger and older cohorts. So it's the whole sample size, whole sample basically. Um, their, the N score versus the whole sample's E score versus their O score, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in this case, there'd be five means because there's five levels of the within subjects independent variable. And there they are, 18, 28, 27, 32, 32. And so what are these means? Well, for that first one, Neo PI1, that's going to be neuroticism. It is the average of the, the neuroticism score of younger people pretending they're old and older people actual neuroticism score. What's that mean? <laughs> um, you know, does that have meaning to combine young and old people's neuroticism scores? It's, I don't know. I mean, not in this design, I don't think it has a lot. So extroversions, the average of those two points combined across uh, younger and older uh, cohorts. Um, <clears throat> this would be openness as those two points, and agreeableness as those two points, and consciousness, conscientiousness as those two points. So is combining Neo PI scores across age cohorts meaningful? Probably not. Again, so it's, this is uh, test flatness is also typically a meaningless comparison. So the within subjects IV main effect is usually kind of ignored, not interpreted. So finally, we get to what we actually care about. So this is the test of whether the profiles actually differ between uh, the between subjects independent variable groups. It is the test of parallelism, parallelism, which is the interaction. It's basically the interaction of the within subjects and between subjects variable. So it answers the primary research question. Do the profiles of the groups differ from each other? So in this example, it would be a comparison of um, the younger versus older on each new PI subscale, right? So it would be, so for example, neuroticism score for um, the older folks compared to the neuroticism score for the younger folks. That's kind of interesting. Did young people think they'd be more neurotic than old people actually report being? Same thing, <clears throat> there's your means. Same thing for extroversion, it compares across the lines. So. Um, the extroversion that uh, the level of extroversion that young people think they'd be like is that what older people actually report? Openness compares those two. Uh, agreeableness is those two. And finally, consciousness is those two. So um, <clears throat> that's one set of comparisons. So remember when we did uh, 2A ANOVA before, we just picked either along the lines or between the lines. Now we do them both. That's what makes this analysis crazy. Um, but you get a lot of info out of it. So not only do you, be, you compare the, the profiles of the two between subjects groups uh, between lines, you also want to compare along their lines. So what does that mean? That means for younger people, you're going to compare their five Neo PI subscale scores to each other and kind of try to rank them. Like, what are they highest on? What are they lowest on, etc. So for our older folks, um, our younger folks, sorry, it's those five red circle dots, those means for the five Neo PI subscales are compared to each other. Again, it's gonna answer the question, um, what did younger people think would be their most salient or more, most pronounced personality traits uh, when they're older? Same thing, the green dots would be compared for the older folks and it would be um, for older people, what are their most uh, pronounced, highest and lowest sort of personality traits on the Neo PI? So these are the comparisons that test our hypothesis about differences in the within subjects IV profiles between the between subjects IV groups. That is, is there a difference between the, between, uh, the personality profiles of what young people thought they'd be like and older people actually report? 
So there are simple effects tests for the test of parallelism. Thinking back to two-way ANOVA, there were something called simple effects tests. When you know there's an interaction, you got to then kind of jump in there and do those actual comparisons. So if the interaction, that is the test of parallelism, is not significant, then you, you're done. There is no difference in the profiles of the groups. Okay, You do not conduct further analyses. The profile of the groups do not differ for even one of the within subjects IV levels. So on the other hand, if the interaction is statistically significant, there's at least one difference between the profiles of the groups. So the effect of uh, one IV differs for the levels of the other IV. You would do simple effects ANOVAs for both the IV, IV between subjects and the IV within subjects. So you're going to do both between lines and across lines uh, simple effects tests. So there you've got your uh, between lines that compares the young and the old on each one of the personality uh, subscales of the Neo PI. So that's one, two, three, four, five tests that would be done. Um, they compare the IV between subjects groups for each uh, within subjects IV level, that is between the lines. Then you got the other one that's along the lines. This compares the within subjects IV simple effects ANOVAs, compare the within subjects IV levels within each between subjects IV group. So within each group, just younger, it compares their five to each other. For just older, it compares their, just their five to each other. And again, the point of that is to get sort of an ordering, a ranking of what what personality, what's the personality profile look like for older people and younger people pretending they're old. They thought they'd be least neurotic, most agreeable. What's in the middle? Can you order those as well? It's that kind of thing. So your simple effects test for parallelism, that is uh, your between subject simple effects ANOVAs, comparing across the lines. We would compare the age cohorts. Um, mean subscale scores for each Neo PI subscale. So that would be five separate between subject simple effects ANOVAs. Each one compares younger versus older for one of the five Neo PI subscales. You would use a bond for any corrected, uh, or excuse me, adjusted alpha level of 0.05 divided by the number of levels of the within, the within subjects IV. So in this case, you'd be using a bond for any corrected alpha level of 0.05 divided by 5. So you'd end up with 0.01 becomes the new alpha level that you use to determine the statistical significance of each of these simple effects ANOVAs. The second set of simple effects ANOVAs is for each of the between subjects levels, that is for younger, and then another set of tests for older, we would compare the Neo PI subscales within each level of age cohort. That is two separate within subjects um, simple effects ANOVAs. So each one compares the five Neo PI subscales. One's within younger, the other one is within older. You also want to use a Bonferroni corrected alpha level. The Bonferroni corrected alpha level is 0.05 divided by the number of levels of the between subjects independent variable. And unfortunately, there you got to keep going. <laughs> so once you're done, like if it's significant, um, all you know is, okay, well, at least one of the uh, uh, um, uh, subscale, Neo PI subscale means differs from at least one of the others for younger. And if the other one's significant, at least one of the Neo PI subscale uh, scores was uh, different for the older. Um, you then have to do a bunch, a bunch of pair T tests that actually find which exactly which subscales differ from exactly which other ones for each group. For those, you would use a Bonferroni corrected alpha level. Um, each one is 0.05 divided by the number of t-tests that you do for each of the levels. So um, <clears throat> in this case, um, remember that for the simple effects ANOVAs, the within subjects, that is the repeated measures is really what they are, you would use 0.05 divided by the number of between subjects IV levels. So you'd use a Bonferroni corrected alpha level of 0.025 and then excuse me, if those are significant, you've got to do a bunch of paired t-tests. Well, you got to do a Bonferroni corrected level uh, for those as well. 10 t-tests. So N versus E, N versus O, N versus A, N versus C, E versus O, E versus A, E versus C, O versus A, O versus C, and then A versus C. That is 10 tests. So use this crazy Bonferroni corrected alpha level of 0.005. 
So note that because these two uh, corrected alpha levels um, are uh, like they're, they only make sense of three decimal points, this is one of those exceptions where um, you don't round these Bonferroni corrected alpha levels to two decimal points. You let them uh, be fully expressed in three decimal points. So we are going to do one of these, and none of this is actually new before you get too freaked out. It's all just stuff we've done before, but they've put together basically two-way ANOVA um, with uh, uh, both a within and a between subjects independent variable. So there's lots and lots of just sort of steps to it. So your measure of effect size is eta squared for the main effects in interaction, and they go in your ANOVA summary table. And it's pretty straightforward. It's just sum of squares for the effect divided by the sum of squares total. Well, sum of squares total is the sum of these things. The sum of squares for the between IV, plus the sum of squares for the between error, plus the sum of squares for the within IV, plus the sum of squares for the interaction, plus the sum of squares within error. You basically just add all these sum of squares together and that gives you total, which you gotta do anyway to get the total for your ANOVA table. And eta squared tells you what eta squared always tells you, the proportion of variability in the dB that is accounted for by the effect, okay, the main effect or the interaction. Your APA format for a Mockley's looks like this. In case you forgot what it looks like, you just got to fill in the goodies. Remember, no one knows what a Mockley's W actually means, so you put the W in there, and then they give you a chi-square equivalent. That's what all this other nonsense is. The total sample size um, it is uh, for the profile analysis is N in there. So it's what's the total sample size. So if there's 50 total participants in the study, it would be 50. <clears throat> the sample size of the between subjects IV group for simple effects Mockley's test is what you would use. So um, when you do your simple effects repeated measures ANOVA, they also have a Mockley's test. And there, your n isn't going to be 50. It's going to be the total number of subjects um, that are in each repeated measure simple effects ANOVA. That's 25 per group, so it would be 25 per group. So the main effects in the interaction are not done in the text. They're done in an, an ANOVA summary table. And I'll show you an example of that later. you got to get it, um, the stuff for it from different places. The simple effects ANOVAs, however, are written up in the text. And it's the usual you know, F degrees of freedom IV, degrees of freedom A, or equals this, P less than or greater than alpha Bonferroni. Remember to round your greenhouse geyser degrees of freedom to the nearest integer. So don't, don't do degrees of freedom that are fractional in your table. It's just annoying. And you do not, for the simple effects ANOVAs, need to report your eta squared values. So you're ready to do this? I know you are. This is going to be super exciting. So does indeed the personality that younger uh, people report, or excuse me, anticipate having at old age differ from what older people actually report? So this is sort of the, um, you know, young people think they're going to be, you know, sort of really outgoing and, but kind of crazy versus what do, what do uh, old people who are actually old report being. So the younger people take the Neo PI pretending they're old. The old people are just taking the Neo PI because they're old. Just take this. And we want to compare what young people think they'll be like to what old people actually report. Here's what the data look like. So you've got the within subjects IV. It's got two levels. It's that first variable. You're either an older person or a younger person answering as though you're an older person. So again, younger is responding as they anticipate being at old age, and older are reporting how they actually are at old age. Then you got your your Neo PI subscale. Each subscale gets uh, it's is the it's within subjects independent variable. Each one gets its own column. Neuroticism, extroversion, openness to new experience, agreeableness, conscientiousness. Your DB, remember, is technically not Neo PI subscale. It's subscale score, slightly different, because the you know, PI subscale is the within subjects IV. The score itself is the DV. So first, when we get in here, we have to tell SPSS that we have a five level within subjects uh, independent variable. So this may look familiar. We're gonna use general linear model, repeated measures. This is the same place that we did repeated measures ANOVA. 
and you get this little box when you first get in there you got to put a name in this box here i put neo pi in the uh, uh for the name of your within subjects ib and for number of levels you got to tell it how many levels does it have well the neo pi has five so i put five in there i clicked add and that put neo pi5 in this little uh, box here click define and you end up going to the next screen so we need to add the within subjects iv levels variables and the between subjects iv so note what's going on here in this upper box you got within subjects variables and the next one down you got between subjects factors then you got covariates, which there are none in this study. So here I've clicked over the five variables that represent the five levels of the within subjects independent variable, that is the five levels of the Neo PI. So if you remember originally it just says parentheses one, two, three, four, and five, and we just clicked over the neuroticism, extroversion, open, disagreeable, and acid conscientiousness in that order to represent those five levels. Down here in the bottom, we have put our between subjects IV, that's H cohort. So there is some stuff you got to make sure you get. You got to get the EM means for the interaction. Um, other options I tell you about on your SVSS assignment. Um, and remember, when we do two way ANOVA, this is like a two way ANOVA here, um, you've got to click paste, not OK, because we have to modify uh, the, the syntax to get simple effects tests. So change the syntax so that you get your five separate between subjects IV simple effects ANOVAs that compare younger and older for each level of the five uh, Neo PI subscales. So hopefully this looks kind of familiar. We hit paste, you get the code, and in here we've added compare age cohort. When you add that on the E means line, um, you will get five tests. It will compare the age cohorts, the two age cohorts, for each level of Neo PI. So um, I do explain this on the handout, by the way. And then run and all to have it run the actual profile analysis and the first set of simple effects tests. So note that the two separate within subjects IV simple effects ANOVA is comparing the five Neo PI subscales within younger, and then separately for older, are run later. You can't get it with the options here, what we're gonna do, and so in normal person language, these five tests we're getting are comparing for each Neo PI subscale, the young and old, okay? So that's why there's five tests. Um, the other set of simple effects tests you wanna run is along the line. So you want four younger people, compare their five subscale scores. A separate one for older people, compare their five subscale scores. And that's so you can sort of order them for each of the age groups. Well, older people reported being the most agreeable, the least neurotic, etc. Um, and we have to wait to get those. We have to run the initial profile analysis. And then if the interaction is significant, we will run the second set of simple effects ANOVAs. So the first thing you get on your output is descriptive statistics. So there's lots and lots of them for each age cohort, younger and older. You have a neuroticism, extroversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness means. So it's comparing all those numbers, younger and older. So these are the 10 Neo PI by age cohort means being compared in the interaction. You also need them um, in the standard deviations for table one of your AP write up. So they do go in your AP write up. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Those are your 10 means. So, so next thing on your output is the boxes test at the equality of covariance matrices. And um, you want to ignore this. So it looks like that, ignore that. And then also ignore the multivariate test. Remember we use those for MANOVA, but for this assignment, we don't care. The next thing you come to is Mockley's test of the sphericity assumption. And we do care about this. Darcy blows, and this is for um, uh, the within subjects effect Neo PI. It's called Mockley's. So, is the assumption met? So, have we do we have homogeneous variances and covariances? Look at Mockley's SIG. If the SIG is less than 0.05, you violated the assumption. If it's greater than 0.05, you've met the assumption. Well, we've got zero, zero, zero. <laughs> so, there's your decision rule. 
um, we have violated the sericity assumption like usual. So um, 0 0.000 is less than 0 0.05. So um, we do not have uh, homogeneous variances and covariances. That is, the sericity assumption is not met. So we're going to use the greenhouse geyser and over results, which you almost always have to do anyway. However, if Mockley sig had been greater than 0.05, the sericity assumption would have been met, and you would have used the sericity assumed line of ANOVA results. So this probably rings a bell to some extent. The APA format again for your Mockley's test, and this is for the overall uh, uh, profile analysis, is down here. You've got a W of 0.44. That comes from up here. Um, nine degrees of freedom. Total sample size was 100. Apparently there was 50 young and 50 old. Was equal to a chi-square of approximately 78.66, and P was less than 0.05, meaning we violated the assumption. And that's where all those goodies come from. So again, remember that N here for your Mockleys is the total number of study participants. So <clears throat> let's go through the effects. The first one we, we run into is the test of flatness. That is the Neo-PI subscale mean effect. So this is the test of within subjects effects table. In there, you've got a, a set of rows called Neo-PI. Notice the first one sphericity is in, then greenhouse geyser, then Hinfeld, then lower bound. Which row are we going to use to interpret? Um, we're going to use greenhouse geyser. So um, this test right here is the Neo PI subscale main effect. That is, um, uh, does the, the and neuroticism for all 100 subjects differ from their extroversion, differ from the openness, differ from agreeableness, etc.? And again, it's usually not very meaningful. So can we reject and all that the Neo PI means combined across young and old are all equal? Our decision rule is if SIG's less than 0.05, reject and all. If it's greater than 0.05, retain the null. Um, <clears throat> we're using the greenhouse geyser line because our Mockley's test indicated we violated this sericity assumption. Yes, um, we can reject the null that the Neo PI means um, combined across old and young are not all equal. And this, this always happens, by the way, because neuroticism is always way lower than the other subscales. So um, the Neo, what we conclude is that the Neo PI subscale score means combined across age cohorts are not all equal. So do we care? <laughs> Basically, the next question, is it of theoretical interest to know that the combined, uh, uh, that combined across both age cohorts, at least one Neo PI subscale score differ from at least one of the others? You know, usually it's neuroticism's lowest. Um, no, it's actually usually not very interesting. So um, hopefully when you get your output and are doing your assignment, you'll see that the test of flatness, that is the main effect of the within subjects independent variable, Neo PI, not all that interesting. So how about the test of parallelism? Well, this is your interaction term. It's just a new term, a uh, new word they use in profile analysis for the interaction. It's in the same table, test of within subject effects, so where it says Neo PI by age cohort. And can we reject the null that the Neo PI means compared between young and old are all equal? That is, is there a difference in their profiles? We use greenhouse geyser again because the sericity assumption um, was violated. And our decision rule is if ANOVA SIG is less than 0.05, reject it. If it's greater than 0.05, retain. We are clearly rejecting, right? 0 0.001 is less than 0.05. So that means that at least one Neo PI subscale score mean differs between the younger and older participants. So, um, you know, they thought they were higher than what older people actually report for at least one thing. So is it of theoretical interest, though, to know that at least one Neo PI subscale score differed between the age cohorts? Yeah, <laughs> this actually tests a steady hypothesis that the personality that young people anticipate having at old age differs when old, from what old people actually report. This is why we do profile analysis, is the interaction. We want to know, do the two groups differ in their, their profiles? So this is one where we're going to have to do some simple effects follow-up tests. So the next thing you run into on your output is not the main effect of uh, uh, the between subjects IV. It is something called tests within subjects contrasts. Note contrasts, and it looks like this, and it's got words like linear, quadratic, cubit, order four, um, 
don't interpret this by accident. <laughs> so, like, what is this crap? I would never do this to you. Um, you will also ignore the Levine's test of equality of error variances. That's tested by the sphericity assumption, so who cares? So, again, ignore the one that's got contrast in the title, tested with sin subjects, contrast. And um, you can ignore Levine's test of equality of error variances because that assumption is already tested as part of the sphericity test. So, you know, why, why do more work when we have to? So, finally, we get to the test of levels. That is the age cohort main effect. That is the main effect of the between subjects independent variable. So it is located in a separate table. So this is super confusing. But basically, the next thing you run into is this thing called tests of between subject effects. And it's not a very big table, so it's easy to miss. And it's only got three rows. Tests of between subject effects. Um, the, the hypothesis here is can we reject the null that the age cohorts have the same NeoPI means combined across all five NeoPI subscales? Um, there is our actual test of that main effect, and our sig value is 0 0.005. If ANOVA sig is less than 0 0.05, uh, reject the null. If it's greater than 0 0.05, retain it. We will definitely, we can definitely reject the null hypothesis here. The subscale score means combined across all neo PI subscales are not equal between age cohorts. That's kind of word salad y, but is it of theoretical interest to know that? Combined across all five Neo PI subscales, the mean score for older and younger participants differ. Well, no, because when you combine, I mean, any score combined across the five Neo PI subscales isn't very meaningful. You've got neuroticism, which you want, you know, people tend to be low on, plus agreeableness, extroversion, openness, etc. What's the average of those five things together? Like, what meaning does it have? There is no average personality, right? So um, it is not very meaningful. So usually you will uh, ignore this. You, you have to put it in your table, uh, your APA uh, summary table for the ANOVA. But other than that, you don't usually interpret it at all. So next thing you run into is estimated marginal means. You can ignore those. And pairwise comparisons, you can ignore those. And finally, we get to simple effects test, the first set, the between lines for the test of parallelism, that is the interaction. So because the interaction of age cohort by neo PI subscale was statistically significant, we need to conduct two different sets of simple effects tests, right? One set is between lines, that is for each neo PI subscale, we compare the young and old. And then the second set is two repeated measures ANOVAs, one for young, one for old, that compares their five subscale scores to each other. So you can, again, sort of rank them. What are they highest on, lowest on, etc. So again, the first set compares the age cohorts, that's your between subjects IV, for each level of the neo PI subscale, that's your within subjects IV. So that is what I was calling the comparison between the lines. These simple effects tests are printed on the output because we added compare age cohort to the E mean syntax when we ran the analysis. The second set of uh, simple effects tests will compare ne the neo PI subscales, that is your within subjects independent variable. It says within each level of age cohort, it might be clear to say for each level of age cohort, right? So one for young, one for old. And that is the comparison along the lines. You get a test that compares NEOAC for young to each other. It's a, within, it's a uh, repeated measures ANOVA. And then you get the same thing for old people, it compares their NEOAC. So these simple effects tests are unfortunately not printed on the uh, output for the main analysis. We got to do some follow-up stuff. We need to request simple effects, repeated measures ANOVAs, and then if they're significant, uh, a buttload of paired t-tests to get these tests later. So the between subjects IV simple effects ANOVAs that compare the two age cohorts for each neo PI subscales, let's look at the statistical significance. And again, these, this is because we, we added compare age cohort. We get five uh, between subjects simple effects ANOVAs, one for each neo PI subscales. And it's in a table called univariate tests on the output. So for these, we have to remember to use the von Fernie corrected alpha level. So 
0.05 divided by, uh, there's five Neo PI subscales, we get a Bonferroni corrected alpha level of 0.01. So 0.01 becomes the new uh, alpha level that we use to interpret the meaning of these uh, uh, simple effects ANOVAs. It's control for type 1 error. So there we go. There is our plot, our two age cohorts, blue is young, gr, uh, red is older, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at the bottom stands for in order, neuroticism, extroversion, openness to new experience, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. It unfortunately doesn't put any OAC or something useful like that. Here is that univariate test table that is printed on the output. And um, I mean, it's not very meaningful looking, right? Note that there's one, two, three, four, five separate uh, ANOVAs here. Um, each one is for one of the levels of the NEO-PI. What's being compared? If you read the bottom, it kind of tells you in crappy SPSS language, each F tests the simple effects of age cohort within each level combination of the other effects shown. What? It's comparing young and old <laughs> for each level of NEO-PI. So NEO-PI where it says one, that's neuroticism. Uh, then two is extroversion, three is uh, openness, new experience, etc. agreeableness, conscientiousness. And then the SIG values, we're going to use the alpha level of 0.01, the Bonferroni corrected one, to determine um, if any of them are significantly different. So alpha Bonferroni of 0.01, univariate test is the name of the table. So for neuroticism, what did we find? Well, we're comparing the young and old for NeoPI1 is neuroticism. So we're comparing young and old. Is it significantly less, is the significance less than 0.01? No, it's not. So young, um, what, how young people thought, how neurotic young people thought they would be was no different from what older people actually reported being, okay? There's no difference between what younger people thought they'd be in terms of neurotic versus what older people actually report being in terms of neurotic. How about number two here? That's E for extroversion. So that's comparing those two means. And the SIG is less than 0.01. So there is a difference between an extroversion. There's a difference between how extroverted younger people thought they'd be versus what older people actually report. So what is that difference? Well, if you look um, at the picture, you can see the blue line is higher. That is your younger people. The red line is lower. That's your older people. And again, these are means. So the younger people um, thought that they would be more extroverted when they were older than what older people actually report being. Let me say it again. The younger people think thought, uh, thought they would be more extroverted when they're older than what older people actually report being. All right, how about three here? Three is openness to new experience. And our SIG value is, is comparing those two means. Again, uh, younger people are higher than older people. Let's see if it's significant. It is. That's less than 0.01. So what's going on? Blue line's higher. That's uh, younger people. Openness versus older people's actual openness. The young people thought they'd also be more open to new experience than what old people report being. Interesting. How about four? That is agreeableness. It compares those two mains, and here, if anything, the old people are actually high, higher, right? Um, their, their line's higher, but is it significant? Is the SIG less than 0.01? Um, it's not. <laughs> so with a normal alpha level, this would be significant, right? But we have to use this Bonferroni corrected one of 0.01, and 0.016 is not less than 0.01. So um, there is... Uh, uh, no difference between the agreeableness levels that young people thought they'd be and what old people actually report being. How about conscientiousness, number five? Um, compares those two, they're really close. SIG is definitely uh, greater than 0 0.01, so um, no difference. Younger people thought they'd be about as conscientious as old people report being. So let's interpret these results. There's our means. In our descriptive statistics table, neuroticism, those are those two means that were compared by univariate test one, simple effects follow up one. The P was greater than 0 0.01, was not significant. So younger people uh, thought they'd be as neurotic as old people actually report being. 
Those two means, even though the numbers aren't exactly the same, it's basically one extra red Skittle different. Not, a, not big enough for us to say it's a real difference. How about extra version? Those two means were compared. Remember what we found earlier? We found that P was less than 0.01. Significant. Look at the two means. Which one's higher? Well, the younger people thought they'd be more extroverted, 31.66, than older people actually report being 26.28. So young people thought they'd be more extroverted. How about openness? Remember what we found? It compares those two means. Well, we found again that P was less than 0.01, so it was significant. And younger people, their mean of 29.78 is higher than 25.92. Younger people thought they'd be more open to new experience than what old people actually report being. How about agreeableness? 30.62 versus 33.64. Was it significant? Do you remember from the prior slide? Uh, it was not. So um, younger people thought they'd be as when they're older. Younger people thought they'd be about as agreeable when they're older as older people actually report being. Say that 10 times fast. How about conscientiousness? Was that significant on the prior slide? It compares 33.06 to 32.44. It was not. And so again, younger people thought they'd be about as conscientious as older people report being in real life. So what's this mean? <laughs> this yellow tries to summarize this for you. So of the five tests, two of them were significant, right? Extroverted and openness. And so younger people, um, thought they'd be more extroverted and open to new experience than old people actually report being. Um, they were, um, they guessed about as, cor they, they guessed correctly or were um, uh, within range for neuroticism, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. There's no differences between what old people, young people thought they'd be like when they're old and what old people's personality profiles actually are. Okay, so that was the simple set of simple effects tests. The between lines one is a heck of a lot easier. Are you ready for the next set of simple effects tests? These are the along lines ones. And again, the goal for these along line ones are um, for young, compare their five sub Neo PI subscale scores to each other and figure out what their highest versus lowest on. Then the second one for older people, compare their five Neo PI subscale scores. What are they highest versus lowest on? So to get this, we have to do two simple effects ANOVAs, repeated measures, one for each age cohort. And we're going to trick SPSS to do it to, into doing it by doing something called split file. So it's outside of the main analysis that we did for the profile analysis. We're going to do something called split file by age cohort. Um, and what you do when you do a split file is it will repeat anything you do subsequently for each level of the split file variable, in this case, each cohort. So you'll get a separate thing for young and a separate thing for old. We'll use a Bonferroni corrected alpha level of, of 0.025, that's 0.05 divided by two levels of the between subjects independent variable. And here's where split file is. It's actually under data. I don't think we've used it yet. So it's actually a pretty useful procedure. And in here, <clears throat> excuse me, we've said, let me take a drink real fast. <clears throat> All right. In here, I have clicked compare groups. I moved age cohort to groups based on compare groups. And I moved age cohort there. Um, and then everything we run from here on until we turn split file off will be done separately for each level of age cohort. All right, so how do we run these simple effects repeated measures ANOVAs? Well, we go back to analyze GLM and repeated measures. And in there, the first thing you get is that screen where we had Neo PI. That's still cool. So we just kind of leave it there. Click the find we end up in this screen and what have I done? Well, uh, we already matched up N, E, O, A, and C in the within subjects variable box. Uh, but what's different is I took out of the between subjects variable box, I removed age cohort, right? Um, it's actually not a variable in a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. We're just comparing the five subscale scores, one for young, one for old, which we achieve not by having the independent variable uh, between subjects independent variable in this box, but by using split file. 
Under plots, do you make sure you get uh, you move Neo PI to the horizontal axis so you get a cool plot? Under options, I do tell you on the instructions to uncheck homogeneity of tests. Um, there's already enough crap here. And remember to click OK, not paste. All right, continuing with trying to interpret these, this second set of simple effects tests that go along the lines. Um, these, there are the uh, descriptors. These are the means that are being compared in each ANOVA. They are on your output. Um, note that the means for the five Neo PI subscales are shown for each level of age cohort. So you've got the younger, it's comparing their five NEO, A, and C, and then for older, it's comparing their five NEO, A, and C. And uh, ignore the uh, multivariate tests that are on the output again. That's for doing MANOVA, not ANOVA. All right, the next thing you run into is your test of the sphericity assumption. Again, these are for each of the within subjects repeated measures and OVAs um, that are simple effects tests. This is not for the overall uh, analysis. We talked about that earlier. So note that under Mockley's test of sphericity, now there's two lines. There's one for younger, one for older. Um, note the SIGs for both are less than 0.05. Shocker. So are, uh, are the sphericity assumptions met? That's probably bad grammar. Is the sphericity assumption met for both or either? Um, you look at the SIG for both Mockley's tests, there they blow. Um, if Mockley's SIG is greater than 0.05, the sphericity assumption is met. Um, short answer is no. Um, 0 0.000 is less than 0.05. So both of the uh, simple effects ANOVAs, uh, one for younger, one for older, both of them violate this sphericity assumption. So what do we do? We're going to interpret the greenhouse geyser ANOVA results for both of these ANOVAs. And there's your form, their format for uh, your uh, writing up your Mockley's test. You need this for your APA write-up. Where that comes from is up above. And then there's also one for older. And you'll see where these pop into your APA write-up. And again, N here is the number of participants in each age cohort. So um, what was it like? I think there's 50 per age cohort. So remember the N before for the overall analysis was 100. Here it's 50 and 50. So complicated steps. So let's interpret the simple effects ANOVAs. So um, there were two age cohorts. So 0.05 divided by 2 gives us a Bonfroni corrected alpha level of 0 0.025. And here is the output that we get as a result of running the simple effects uh, repeated measures ANOVAs. And there's just tons of crap on here, right? We're going to use Bonfroni uh, of 0 0.025 to interpret each one in this table that's called tests within subjects effects does at least one neo pi subscale differ from at least one of the others for the younger cohort so looking at the top of this table where it says younger note there's under source neo pi and error those are the two things error in the effect what line are we going to look at greenhouse geyser is that less than 0 0.05 or 0.025, the answer is, yeah, sure is. So at least one of the Neo PI subscales different from at least one of the others for young folks. That is, they're higher on at least one of the NEOAC than at least one of the others. Here's how you'd write that up, an F of three in 134. So where did I get that from? Note that the degrees of freedom is actually 2.738. Excuse me, an error is 134.165. points one six five. You round them to the to the nearest integer when you write them up here. That's why it says f of three and one thirty four is equal to thirty nine point five six. P was less than 0 0.025. That goes in your text. Does at least one neo PI subscale differ from at least one of the others for the older cohort? So really at the bottom of the table here. Again, we go to the greenhouse geyser line. Is that less than 0 0.025? You bet. So there's how you write that one up in APA format. Again, we've rounded the, the greenhouse geyser degrees of freedom, 2.6 rounds to 3. And the error uh, for greenhouse geyser 1.27, 0.4 rounds to 1.27 is equal to 45.63. P was less than 0.025. So what do we know? For both younger and older, at least one of their Neo PI subscales is more sort of prevalent or more salient than at least one of the others. The question is, well, which ones? Like, what are they highest on and what are they lowest on? Well, to answer that, do you remember what the follow-up tests are for repeated measures ANOVA? There is no two-key. you got to do a bunch of pair T-tests. 
and that's going to allow us um, to compare each uh, Neo PI subscale to each of the others one by one and determine what their height, what uh, each group is highest on, what's kind of in the middle, what they're youngest on, um, etc. So, um, <clears throat> in terms of statistical significance, you can ignore the test within subjects contrast again. So that's the one that's got linear and quadratic. Just, just ignore that. Um, you can also ignore the test of between subject effects um, when that's on the output. So the follow-up t-tests, how do we do those? Well, um, we need to get follow-up t-tests for each age cohort, cohort separately. So we need to compare any O, A, and C to each other for young and then separately for old. How do we do that? Well, um, the short answer is, <clears throat> excuse me, we have the split file procedure still on from before. So if we do the t-tests, it's going to do the t-test separately for young and then separately for old because split file is still on. We haven't turned it off. So there are 10 total tests if you count them up for each age cohort. So that's 0.05 divided by 10 gives us, <coughs> excuse me, a Bonferroni corrected off level of 0 0.005. So we go to, <coughs> to get our paired t's, we go to analyze, compare means, paired samples t's. And what have I done here? <laughs> well, I've done each of the one-to-one -one comparisons, neuroticism to extroversion, neuroticism to openness, neuroticism to agreeableness, neuroticism to conscientiousness, extroversion to openness, extroversion, et cetera, et cetera. There's 10 total one-to-one -one comparisons. I've added them all under the paired variables. So make sure you catch them all um, for five a five-level within subjects variable. There's 10 total uh, pair T tests. All right. <clears throat> Remember, because split file is on, SPSS is going to do 10, these 10 tests for young, and then it's going to do the 10 tests for old. It's going to do it separately for each age cohort. So um, on the output, uh, and I tell you this so you don't get confused, well, the T test output always had this correlations thing in there. Ignore it, okay? <laughs> Do not try to interpret these. Someone's totally going to. Um, they Every semester this happens. Note, I did tell you during lecture, when you get to the output that says paired samples correlations, ignore that. That's not the t-test. You want to keep going. All right, now we're finally at the t-test. So this is what the output looks like. It's kind of un illegible because <laughs> it's so small. Paired samples. Uh, tests. These are your actual one-to-one -one, um, follow-up pair T tests for your uh, simple effects tests along the lines. The actual pair T test results are in this pair T test table. Note that the T test results are repeated separately for each age cohort. You get a set of the 10 pairs for young and a set of the 10 pairs for old because split file is still on. So we're going to go through these T test results first for younger, then for older on the next slides, and try to figure out like what is going on here. Um, but first, um, remember that the corrected Bonfroni alpha level we're using here is 0 0.005, and almost always it only shows three decimal points on the sig values here. We have to expand those so that they show four decimals in case something's like right on the border and rounds to 0 0.005. Is it 0 0.0046 or is it 0 0.005, right? We want to know. So here, um, we need to increase the paired t-test sig values to display four digits. How do we do that? Well, you highlight the column. Here I've highlighted the column uh, of the sig values. And I've gone to, um, <clears throat> so first you double click on it, then you highlight it, I guess. Um, then you right click on the shaded cells, go to cell properties, then the format label value tab. And I've uh, in there, I've increased the decimals down here from three to four. Click OK, it will give you four decimals. Close that pivot table and you're ready to keep going. So here are uh, the results for younger folks. This is again for younger folks pretending or uh, anticipating what their personality is going to be like when they're older. We're looking for sig values that are less than 0.005. 
So, what do we get? Um, neuroticism versus, versus extroversion was significantly different. Neuroticism versus openness was significantly different. And uh, you look, if you look at the means, neuroticism is the lowest. So it's lower than extroversion. It's lower than openness. How about neuroticism versus agreeableness? Less than 0.005. And again, if you look at the means, neuroticism is lower than agreeableness. And finally, for conscientiousness, significant neuroticism is lower than conscientiousness. Any of these others uh, less than 0.005? You got 0 0.0967, 0 0.2656, none of them are, right? So that's it. That's the only effect we get is that, um, sorry, I do go through these, not sig, E is equal to O, not sig, E is equal to A, not sig, E is equal to C, not sig, O to A, O to C, and A to C. So the only difference for younger people is they thought they'd be least neurotic. All their other, the E, O, A, and C, didn't differ from each other. So this is a, what we call a two-level profile. They thought they'd be least neurotic. That was the lowest. And then EOA and C were higher, but just kind of all together, not differentiated. So um, if you like figures, if you're visual, Scott is, I'm gonna show you how I do this. Here's the figure that you get if you follow my instructions. And I've put in any O, A, and C into that thing at the bottom so we can actually interpret it easier. And remember what we found. We found that neuroticism was significantly different from all the other subscales. And look, look how much lower it is than all the other subscales. And then we found that um, E, O, A, and C, the other subscales, didn't differ from each other. These are all basically equally high. So they thought they'd be lowest on neuroticism and then equally high on E, O, A, and C, which is not super interesting. Um, so in your homework assignment, I have you add the N, E, O, A, and C as well. So N was significantly different from all the others. So they, uh, young people thought they'd be uh, the least neuro or lowest on neuroticism. <clears throat> they thought they'd be less N than any of the other personality traits. But then E, O, A, and C, none of those were significantly different from each other, right? So they thought they'd be sort of like, Blech, for E, O, A, and C, lowest down end, but just sort of E, O, A, and C was their most prevalent or most salient features. So they didn't think they'd differ on those four things from each other, right? They thought be, they'd be equally extroverted, open, agreeable, and conscientious. So not super exciting profile. Young people just said, well, we're not going to be like super neurotic, but other than that, we're just going to be, you know, equally E, O, A, and C. So that's kind of boring. So what do old people actually who are taking it as old people actually report being when they're uh, older in terms of personality. That's the next set of simple effects t-tests. So let's look at the older. Here's their tests. Again, we're looking at older now. Much more complex. If you go down that SIG column, you can see there's um, excuse me, way more in here there, less than 0.05. In fact, everything's significant <laughs> except two, right? Pair five, which is extroversion versus openness. And then the last one, agreeableness versus conscientiousness. So going down the row here, that's SIG. And if you look at the means, neuroticism is less than E, neuroticism is less than O, neuroticism is less than A, and neuroticism is less than C. So um, they thought they'd be least neurotic, just like the younger people thought they would be. This next one, though, is interesting. Um, extroversion and openness did not significantly differ, right? It's not less than 0.05. So um, old people report being lowest on E and equally E and O, all right? How about extroversion versus agreeableness? Sig different, E was less than A. How about extroversion versus conscientiousness? Significant, E was less than C. How about uh, openness versus agreeableness? Significant, O was less than A and O versus C. They thought O would be less than C. And then finally, um, how about agreeableness versus conscientiousness? Remember, um, those two things were higher than E and O and N, um, but they do not differ from each other. So what does this all mean, <laughs> right? Well, what's going on here? So again, the goal is to be able to say, old people are the most this, sort of least this, and these were in the middle. That's what we're trying to do is order that, uh, uh, Neo PI personality characteristics, what's most prevalent or salient, what are they most this, least this, etc. So on visual, 
So I just remember everything differs except E verse O and A verse C. Here's that, uh, the plot for older people. And again, it's automatically printed. And what do we have here? Well, here we have something way more interesting than the other one. We have a three level personality profile. What do you mean, Scott? So again, I've added NEOAC at the bottom. So remember that N neuroticism was lower, was different than all, significantly different than all the other subscales. And looking at the picture, you can see old people are the least, uh, of all the, the NEOPI subscales, they're least neurotic than any of the other subscales. Like they're lowest on neuroticism. So um, older cohort be reported being less neurotic, I guess, uh, than any of their other personality traits. Cool. How about next? Well, remember that E and O were lower than A and C, but they were not different from each other. That's like a second level. So they thought they'd be lowest on N, next highest on E and O. Okay. Finally, A and C up there, um, <clears throat> significantly different from N, E, and O, but not from each other. Right. And you can see they're higher. So they reported being um, equally highest on A and C. So, what oh, fire engine. So putting this all together, uh, older people thought uh, report being um, the highest on agreeableness and conscientiousness, then extroversion and openness, and lowest among the five subscales on neuroticism. So it's kind of interesting. All right, so for the APA write-up, you need to modify your SPSS profile plot and make an APA format. This is probably not a surprise to you. So you got to take this crap you get out of SPSS and you got to turn it into this, which, you know, it actually does look better. <laughs> so what do you have to do? Well, there's a lot, actually. You need to start the y-axis at zero. You want to get rid of that title at the top that says estimated marginal means and measure underscore one. Like, it's just crap. Just get rid of it. You want to make the Y and X axis titles actual words. So instead of estimated marginal means, notice that changes to mean subscale score. And at the bottom, instead of just Neo PI smushed together, I change it to Neo dash PI subscale. And then for um, I stretched the uh, the chart so the legend is inside the chart parameter or perimeter. Um, <clears throat> what else have I done? I changed the one, two, three, four, five to the actual words, neuroticism, extroversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. Um, so alternatively, if you don't want to make these changes, you can just edit the one that's in the APA write-up. Um, it's up to you. Like, I don't care. As long as you, you have to do a chart though for profile analysis, like the whole point is to look at the profiles. <laughs> so you have to do a profile plot. All right, so just finishing this up, um, there is a table in your, a actually there's more than one table in your APA write-up. The first one is means and standard deviations, which you'll get from your descriptives table and your APA output. But um, there's an ANOVA summary table for which you get stuff from all over the place on your output. Two separate tables, one called test of between subject effects and one called test of within subjects effects. And you got a Nessie bar from into this thing in the APA write-up. So notice a couple things here. The between subject effects has its own section in this table, and the within subject effects has its own section within this table. So for the between subject effects, where do those come from? Well, they come from this table up top called tests of between subject effects, not so shockingly. And here it's the age cohort main effect, which we said was not very interesting, but we do have to put it in our table, and we need the error for that as well. And those you just put in round to two decimals. For the within subjects effects, it gets a little bit crazy, but I believe I believe in you guys. Ready? So they do come from the test of within subjects effects table in the AP or the SPSS output, um, and we use the greenhouse geyser row, if you remember, to interpret these. So for the neo PI subscale main effect, um, we we put that row in there, except for the degrees of freedom. Note in the uh, SPSS it says 2.704 in the table. We've rounded that to the nearest integer because there's a little table note that says greenhouse geyser degrees of freedom are rounded to the nearest integer. So we rounded 2.704 to three. Same thing here, use greenhouse geyser, round the degrees of freedom. And then finally for error, same thing, 264.96, we've rounded to 
265 degrees of freedom. So round those greenhouse geysers degrees of freedom to the nearest integer. Now for the total, you have to hand calculate the total sum of squares and the total degrees of freedom. And the total degrees of sum of squares is just add all the sum of squares between uh, and within. So one, two, three, four, five numbers, you add those up, you get the 36,866.65, all five sum of squares across both between and within. Um, for the degrees of freedom, if you add those up, you, you'll note you don't get 499. <laughs> you actually don't just add the ones that are shown in your APA write-up table that you filled in. You actually use the sprissy assumed degrees of freedom for the within subjects effects. So it's going to be 1 up top plus 98. And instead of 3, 3, and 2, 6, 5, you go back to your SPSS output and you go to the row that's sprissy assumed and you add 4 plus 4 plus 392, and that's how you get the 499. Once you get that uh, sum of squares total, it's really easy to get your eight of squares. It's just the sum of squares for that particular effect, age cohort, NeoPI, or the interaction divided by the total. So this is crazy. <laughs> it's a lot of it's it's a lot of steps, but all this stuff is. Uh, uh, different things you've done in the past and I think you guys are going to do a great job at this. So if you have problems, uh, remember to post uh, your questions in the discussion and I will do my best to answer them. Otherwise, make sure you got a lot of time to work on this and um, give it time, but you can do this. Okay. Good luck.